Okay, this is my Adobe Photoshop tutorial um, on how to make this ghost type, obviously in Photoshop, um, and I'm just going to run through some basic techniques to help you build up an image like this. Um, so I'm going to start by making a new document, this is what you'll need to do. Obviously you don't have to do it portrait, you can do it any way you want. Um, I'm just going to make an A4 document. And what I'll do is I'll just have that one um, open next door so I can show you what I'm doing. So the first thing you need to do is choose your font. And click on the type tool, click on the desktop. Um, as you can see I actually chose Bookman old, old style as my um, font because I wanted something quite classic and traditional. Um, and you can see that I actually had to choose the font size as 500 in order to make it big enough because we want this to be quite imposing. And so what I'm going to do is I'm not going to show you all the way through, I'm just going to show you the basic techniques and then show you how I created the under layer um, and then the final layer to create the final outcome and you can obviously fill the bits in in between. So um, the first letter obviously is a G and then what you want to do is we need to edit the opacity and then we're also going to add in some blur filters. So I took the, the opacity down to about 35 on mine just to get started and then I added in a um, radial blur and don't forget this is just the under layer at the moment. You'll get this box popping up to say that the type layer needs to be rasterized before doing anything to it, that's fine, just click OK, that'll do that for you. And then the first thing I, I kind of was working with was amounts of 5, um, around 20 and 35. So I'm going to just do this one on 5. You want the split, um, the blur method to be spin and you want the quality to be good. That's adequate for us at the moment. And this will now give you a nice kind of blurred effect to your letter starting to help us get the ghostly kind of effect. The next thing that you can do um, is we want a couple more G's setting up around this one. Um, so all you can do to do that is just to click on Alt, hover over your layers and drag that down and that will then make a copy for you and then you can just click and move. Um, at this stage it's key to make sure that you've got your auto select um, set to layer so that that will automatically set select when you click on screen. Um, Later on we might have to turn that off, but that just helps us in order to move things around and layer things up. So it might be that you want to actually go back into your one of your layers, it doesn't matter which one, and maybe just take the opacity down a bit. And at this stage it is very much trial and error. There are no set rules, so just have a play around with that. Um, so at the moment I think I'm just going to stick with that one. Um, and then we need to write the second letter. And as you can see on the... Um, original one that I showed you, which I'll just click back to you, I created my text sort of flowing down. If that's what you want to do, obviously carry on as I do it, but it's up to you how you want to play around with your letters and where you want to position them, and that's a lot of fiddling around that you can do in your own time. Um, again, hit the radial blur filter. I'm just going to leave mine as the settings are, and that'll do that automatically for you. And then we'll take the opacity down again, maybe to 35. Again, you can hold the Alt button and actually drag out your letter on screen, or you can do it over here. Um, and I'm going to probably take that down again, that second letter. And you can actually do the same for each one. I mean, the first time I did it, I didn't do the same. I actually edited how I was going to work with those letters um, individually. Um, we can come back and change that in a minute. So you might want to do that for all of your letters. Just building up as you go. Taking the opacity down. Adding in the radial blur. And then kind of building the image up like that. Clicking down on Alt. Oop. Oops, something's happened, I've lost that there. Put it on 35 minutes. Don't alt and drag it out. And then we're getting this kind of nice layered up effect. 
So if we come back to this image here that I've created as the final one, you can see that some of these are actual te text letters and the other ones are rasterized shapes. So if I just hide the text letters and then you can see what I was doing to create the background, which is what I've just been showing you a minute ago. Um, if I compare this, you'll see that I've built, built up the layers, built up the layers, um, and I've got lots more of the letters in there until I've created this really ghostly effect. Now, this is much more blurry. Some of these are much more blurry than the others. So if you wanted to do that, you can go back into Filter Blur. Oh, sorry, not Filter Blur. Filter Blur, and then we want Radial Blur. And then you can just add some more blur, maybe going up to about 15. It's quite a nice number. Um... And you can get some of your letters a bit more blurry, just to build up that sort of movement effect. Um, and then you can start to see what's going on. And you can actually drag more copies of your letters out. So if you weren't happy and you wanted to drag more copies out, you know, you can go down to as little as five on the opacity. And again, coming back in, adding some more blur to that. Made your blur so that we're starting to get that real sense of movement in there, in that underlay, and that's really important because when you add your letter, the lettering back over the top, um, it's helpful to have had that kind of underlayer of the movement in it. You can even go back in and add some more blur. And this is all up to you to decide what you want to do. Take it up maybe to 20, around 20 mark. And so you can see that gradually you're building up this underneath layer that will really shine through when you add in your final layers at the end. And again, it's entirely up to you how you want to add, where you want to put your lettering, and how you will want them to work together. The other thing that I did on this one was that some of the letters I went through and changed the layer blending mode to overlay. And what that does is it just helps the letters to interact a little bit better with each other. So if we click, click on this one, click on that O for instance, and click on overlay, you'll see that that sort of disappears in a lot of the areas, but where it's overlapping with the others, it has some interesting effects occurring. It's sort of... Um, shines through underneath and each of the layers begins to kind of overlap with each other a bit better and you get this more kind of integral um, layering approach. So once you've worked on this and developed your um, layering you can see that you can move some of the letters around and when you do that you get interesting effects overlaying the other sections of the other letters. So have a play around, finish off with your um, lettering here Make sure that some of them are set to overlay. And then if I just minim minimize that one, and I'll show you where we got to. This is the underlayer. Um, and then you basically need to start making your layering, your lettering, again, over the top. But this time, you don't want to um, add any blur to those lettering, because you want these ones to be a bit clearer. So I created the letter T. I've dragged it over there and I've just taken the opacity down to 80 and if I put it on normal you can see the difference. So this is with the normal um, layer blending mode for my letter T on opacity 80 but if I then go to overlay you can suddenly see all of the underneath layers starting to play um, a role and it just blurs the edges, takes off that crispness and adds a bit of more interesting textural approach. Uh, and basically, you're just doing exactly the same for the, all the other letters. And where you place them is entirely up to you. So again, not on the normal um, layer blending mode, on the opacity 80, it looks like this. But if I then add in overlay to the letter, you get this really interesting textual um, approach, which I think just looks really nice. Uh, and again, as I said before, where you lay your letters is actually key because you can move it right the way down on this overlay effect and you can you can have more than one uh, and you can add in to the texture if you're not quite as happy um, with the texture as you were just with the underneath layer.
So just make sure that all mine are showing now. Um, yes, they are, and you can see I've got this really interesting textural approach. And actually, for me, looking at this again, that H, let's just click off that. And when you get to this stage, it's probably better if you take off the auto select for layers because you've got so many things going on you're never going to be able to select the layer that you want so you can see this layer here I'm not entirely happy with that I don't think it's perhaps dark enough so I'm just going to drag that out make another H there um, just to add a bit more strength to that and a bit more textural um, effect uh, and that is how you make interesting ghost typography in Adobe Photoshop. Hope you enjoyed that tutorial and that you've learned a few new techniques.